Hello, welcome to this CQP web tutorial and in this video I'm going to provide a walkthrough of the CQP web account creation process. So to begin with the first thing that you need to do is to go to the web address of whatever CQP web server it is that you want to create an account on. Uh, in this case I'm using the uh, server at uh, Lancaster University and on the very front page you will see something that looks a bit like this. You will see a fairly standard logon form with a slot for the username and a slot for the password but if you don't have an account yet which is the case we're looking at today then the link you want is this one here which is the create account link. Now it's worth noting that this um, link will not be there um, if the account creation system is turned off on a particular server. On the Lancaster server it's turned on but on some uh, it may be turned off. Anyway if we click on the create account link this takes us to an, a new bit of interface which is the uh, user system interface and you can see down on this menu here that you have various options login so if you have an account you can click that and get the login form activate new account resend account activation retrieve lost username reset lost password we'll cover some of these in this tutorial but not all of them the lower part of this menu it bears pointing out is just the standard options uh, for information about CQP web that you always see at the bottom of the left hand menu like this the account creation process again you will only see this form if uh, account creation has been enabled on this particular server. If not, if account creation has been disabled, then you will just see a notice here saying account creation has been disabled and um, you will be referred to your system administrator. When account creation is disabled, the only way to get an account is to contact the system administrator. Okay, so you sign up very much in the way that you would sign up for any uh, account on a system on most websites. It's basically the same. Uh, you have to enter a username, you have to enter a password, you have to retype the password so that the system knows you didn't make any typos, you have to have an email address because all accounts must be connected to a valid email address and um, uh, you will need to be able to access the account of whatever email you put here in order to activate the account but I'll explain that in a minute. Um, then there are a couple of extra bits of information we ask for your real name, we ask for your affiliation and we ask for your location where you are in the world. Um, and right down at the bottom it's worth noting the CQP web version 3.1.1 this create account facility was added in version 3.1 so if you're looking at a server on version 3.0 then this won't be available so that's worth noting alright let me demonstrate the process uh, first make sure you read the instructions your username can be up to 30 letters long and must consist of only unaccented letters, digits and the underscore. Okay, so let me put in... Uh, I need mean to type some, some person. I meant to type some strange person. There we go. Uh, and I will um, uh, put in as password, I don't know, hat. Obviously, hat is not a very good password to use for anything, but of course, I'm going to delete this account as soon as I've finished doing this tutorial, so using a bad password is quite fine. Now, it should be noted here that good practice with passwords means not reusing high security passwords for things like CQP Web. That is, do not use the password that your email account depends on. Do not use the password that your IT account at work depends on. Do not use the password that your online banking depends on. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't do that. Basically, password reuse makes it uh, more likely that uh, you will get 
your password stolen because if you reuse passwords on many sites then it only takes one of those sites to be broken into um, to uh, allow your password to be stolen and then used on all the other sites where you've used it because of course everything's linked to your email address um, CQP web is written in such a way as to make it as difficult as possible for someone to steal your password however as difficult as possible does not mean impossible so it is still possible that something could go wrong and some malicious person could intercept your password when you log on if that happens it's not a disaster because CQP web does not really contain very much confidential information uh, really only your email address um, but if you've reused a password that you've used on you know some secure website somewhere then someone breaking into your CQP web account is actually a big deal so don't make it easy for identity theft criminals don't reuse passwords sorry for that short rant next step email address uh, as it says here we will send a verification message to this email address and your account will not be activated until you click on the link that we send in that message um, if you have an institutional email address you should use it to sign up that is if you're a student or a member of staff at a university you should use the email address that you have from that university if you are using CQP web in connection with work uh, at a company or with work at a government department or with work at a charity then you should use the email address that is linked to that organization and this is because as it says here your access to some corpora may depend on your affiliation so for instance on this particular server, the Lancaster server, there are some corpora which we are only allowed to make accessible to people at other UK universities. We'll use your email address, which of course you have to verify, in order to make sure uh, that you really are at a UK university. If you don't use your UK university email address, then you won't be able to access those corpora. In particular, don't use Gmail or Hotmail or whatever uh, because they're so generic. Um, you'll only get access to the most widely available corpora if you do that. So I will type in my institutional email address and I'm not scared of putting this uh, my real email address in here on the web because of course I work at a university so my email address is on the internet anyway. My real name is Andrew uh, Andrew Hardy. There we go. And my affiliation is Lancaster University. And my location, uh, UK is somewhere right down at the bottom, but I can't be bothered scrolling that far down, so I'll just put Antarctica. All of this is optional, but as it says here, it's highly useful for us to know a bit about who is using our CQP web installation. Um, we are a university at Lancaster running this. Uh, other people who run CQP web installations are either often either universities or other public bodies and these are the kinds of bodies who want to know who they're providing services to. This is quite important to them. Uh, even for companies it's important because they want to know a bit about their customers. Alright and that's that. So I click register account. So that does that, and what that means is that if all has gone well, I should have received an email, or I should be about to receive an email, and indeed, yes, I have. Uh, let me just drag uh, in my email from this other browser window. Here it is. So you'll get an email with this um, header line. Who it's from will differ depending on the server that it's sent to, uh, the server that you've uh, registered on, and the email will look like this. A new user account has been created in association with your email address. To validate this new account and confirm the address to which this email was sent, please visit the following link. If your email client disables external links, copy and paste the address. 
standard stuff. If CQP Web cannot read your verification code successfully, it will ask for a verification key. Um, and this is the verification key. If you did not create this account or request it to be created on your behalf, then all you need to do is ignore this email. The account will then never be activated. So very simple stuff. Let's just talk about the two ways of doing this. If that link in the email works, then no problem. You can just click on it. However, if it doesn't, then you will you can either navigate to or you will be taken automatically to this page here which says activate new account. And as it says here, you should have received an email with a 32 letter code. Indeed I did. And I can copy and paste that 32 letter code in there and click to verify account. Um, if you've, if you've uh, created an account and you haven't received your 32 letter code, then you can request for it to be resent. So all I would have to do if I need it resent is to click on the resend, resend account activation code there and press a.hardy at lancaster.at.uk there, voila. Um, and uh, that does the trick. Um, and I can request a new activation email. I shan't press that now because we'll use the one that I've been using all along. So let me drag this back in again. I'm going to use this link, which I think should work properly. Yes, it does. And there we go. New account verification has succeeded. Welcome to our CQP web server. Click here to log in. And there we are. And now I can use that username and password to log in. Um, once you log in, um, you'll get different options in this menu because, of course, what you can do as a logged in user is a lot different to what you can do without being a logged in user. You've also got options without being logged in. If you forget your password, you can reset it using an email mechanism similar to what we've seen. And if you've completely forgotten your username as well, then you can ask for that to be sent to you again by email. The system will send you your username by email. It will not send you your password by email. I'll go into more detail on some of these other options and the other options that you see here when you log in in a separate tutorial. But for now, that's all.